think that's racism. She's so black women are so fucking low brow and like plain Jane mentally that she just thinks she did she don't even think well it's about policy. She thinks that the cop who said that was a racist that he don't like Brandon Johnson because he's black. I promise you, I know these women. They don't think like deep. She thinks that the cop told her that because he's a racist and he don't like the man because he's black. The police station. I uh, got told by the desk sergeant that this was going to happen. It was going to keep happening because Brandon Johnson got elected. That floored me. An ambulance then took them to the hospital, but the couple was without their phones, wallets, and shoes, which had all been stolen during the attack. I told um, them, told the couple that I was going to go home to find them some shoes so that they wouldn't be barefoot for the rest of the night. Her name is Lenore. Wow. She gave us shoes, and took her, us home, took us to the hospital. Her husband as well. Thank you. Let's do on the others. And, and that's the a mantra that I live by every day is just do on the others as you would have them do on you. And despite her criticism of the police response downtown, she says the detectives at the police station took the police report were great and did a very thorough job. An investigation into that attack is now underway, but so far no one is in custody. We are live in the loop tonight. Anthony, <laughs> Anthony thank you. They over police our kids. No one in custody. <laughs> not it, not one person is in custody for that. Anthony, thank you. And you heard the claim there about Mayor-elect Brandon Johnson and what happened. Critics are asking questions. After the weekend, who is in charge is what they want to know. Mike Flannery asked that question ahead coming up at 920. So obviously there's a lot of concerns from the uh, hospitality industry, especially the restaurants along Michigan Avenue. Chicago's multi-billion dollar hospitality industry raising red flags about the team. Yo, just look at that, man. You came down to Chicago for dinner and shit. Do you know online people are fucking arguing with Andrew Tate right now because Andrew Tate calls Chicago a shithole? And it's black people telling him that, man, if you come to Chicago, we're going to fuck you up. <laughs> and we're going to kill you because you said Chicago was a shit. <laughs> Just imagine you come out of a fucking restaurant and shit and you see this. I'm staying in the restaurant. I'm not coming out. Fuck all this, man. And listen, don't get me wrong. There was a time not long ago where I would have just walked through this shit and wouldn't even have thought twice about it. But the thing about these sons is bullets can go off at any time. Gunfire can go. Somebody can throw a bottle, da -da -da -da, anything. A car could drive by and just start shooting in the crowd. They're so fucking dangerous, and they don't care about life, man. They don't care about anybody's well-being. They're so selfish and dangerous. They're, listen, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it because nobody else can. I'm going to say it because nobody else can. Salute to CA, Oc Nation Hall of Famer, man. She says, these people are so ungrateful and evil towards cops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you kind of took my thunder, CA. I was going to say that they're so ungrateful, evil towards everybody. <laughs> everybody. Some people are terrible people. Some people are just not good people within the framework of this society. With the rules and the social mores and the values and the um, traditions and the standards and the customs of Western society, within the framework of Western society, against the canvas. Let's just say Western society is a white canvas and some people are the paint. We are terrible people against the canvas of Western society. We're pieces of shit. Now, in another society, would we be different? Yes. Uh, in Western society, we're 
fucking assholes. Chicago's multi-billion dollar hospitality industry raising red flags about the team chaos in downtown Chicago. They say people need to feel safe coming into the city and are pushing police and incoming mayor Brandon Johnson to put together a better game plan. Dane Placco reports on how the team takeover impacted one legendary Chicago business. Uh, lock the doors. We have security here, so we shut down and we didn't let anybody in or out. Miller's Pub has seen a lot over its 90 years on Wabash, but on Saturday night, the iconic restaurant was forced to close three hours early and escort customers to their cars as groups of teens took over parts of downtown Chicago. We feel like that doesn't bode well for the summer and, and you know, gets me worrying. We, we thought. Now, listen. If you ask this guy about Ralph Yarl, he would be like, it was the worst thing ever, man. Man, I, who, how, in what world does knocking on a door equal a death sentence? I mean, come on, man. Like, you can't knock on somebody's door without getting your fucking brains blown out. It's fucking insane, man. I mean, look. I don't know who emboldened these people, whether it was Trump or whatever, but just got to stop. He would do all that over a fucking kid he don't know, over some fucking son team he don't know, and it's a story he don't know all the facts to. They're asking him about his own fucking business. The business he put his lifeblood into. You know how fucking hard it is to start a restaurant and keep it afloat? You ever seen um restaurant disasters and shit with Gordon Ramsay and Robert Irvine and shit? Running a restaurant takes everything out of you. They're asking him what does he think about these fucking apes ruining his restaurant. Listen to his tone. I feel like that doesn't bode well for the summer and, and you know, gets me worrying. We, we thought things were on the up and up and, and something like this happens and feel like knocked right back down a little bit. Hotels, bars and restaurants that depend on tourism and conventions to make or break their business say what happened last weekend cannot happen again. As we move into the summer months, we know that it could get worse. So we really need, you know, people that are in authority to actually do their job. Sam Toya of the Illinois. You mean the mayor and the city council? Well, they're not going to do their job. They ran on not doing their job. This guy's a fucking moron. How did he fucking become a fucking the, uh, the goddamn president of the goddamn Illinois Restaurant Association? You're a fucking moron. They ran on fucking free stuff and goddamn programs and gives me and all this shit. They ran on that. They owe the people that. <laughs> they ran on gives me free stuff. They have to fulfill their campaign promises, you fucking moron. They ran on that. Again, as we move into the summer months, we know that it could get worse. So we really need, you know, people that are in authority to actually do their job. Sam Toya of the Illinois Restaurant Association says they've already had discussions with incoming Mayor Brandon Johnson about the importance of securing the downtown area, the city's economic engine. People are now paying attention, and we don't expect that an incident like this to happen again this summer. The Chicago Loop Alliance is reviving its ambassador program, in which unarmed ambassadors in uniform will patrol streets in the Loop, go into stores, and attempt to identify and de-escalate situations that could lead to trouble. De-escalate. You can't de-escalate with these people. Salute to um, Muramasa, Operation Hall of Fame, which says, yo, ah. What would the CCP in China would have done if all these teams... Oh, my God. Let me tell you something about Suns, too. If we know that shit... If we know you can't do that shit, we, we ain't gonna do that shit. 
we wouldn't do that shit over there. Yo, if we had been in China for 400 years, it would have took four years for us to figure out, okay, they don't play this shit. Okay? China, listen, man. Gliders are different than tigers, man. Tigers are cruel, man. <laughs> tigers are smart and they're cruel, man. Tigers are not like gliders, man. Tigers wouldn't put up with this shit, man. <laughs> and I'm not talking about those woke tigers in San Francisco. I'm talking about a tiger country. Like he said, China. Tigers wouldn't, man, tiger wouldn't put up with this shit, man. <laughs> An attempt to identify and de-escalate situations that could lead to trouble. It is not an everyday experience, but we take these incidents very seriously. And we're really committed to working with the relevant partner organizations in the city and the CPD to work on a comprehensive approach for making sure that these things don't happen again. And they say that the timing couldn't be worse, just as bars, restaurants, and hotels are beginning to crawl out of a giant hole caused by the pandemic and the economy. We don't want diners or tourists uh, to feel uncomfortable coming to Chicago. And everyone we talked to said they welcome the teens downtown, but as customers, everyone we talked to said they welcome the teens downtown. That's why you can't trust these people because they're fucking liars. Think about that, man. You have to think about that. Everyone they talked to said they welcomed the teens downtown. That's a lie. There's no way everyone said, yeah, uh, yeah, we'd love to have the teens down here. It's just great. Can't wait. Where are they at now? What, um, can you call some teens and tell them to come down right now? You can't trust these people. You can't trust um, liberals, man. You can't trust the liberal. Any they lie every. All they do is lie. You can't trust them. You mean every single person that they talk to said, "Great, man. Um, we just love having the teens down here." That shows you how sick they are. Power, they're power hungry. They know that black people equal power and shit in elections and shit. And they'll do anything to stay in power. And everyone we talked to said they welcomed the teens downtown, but as customers, not to create chaos. Dane Placo, Fox 32. Shit. God damn. Everyone, yeah, <laughs> god damn, every single one of them was like, Yeah, bring on more teens, man. We want to talk more about what happened this weekend downtown. Some activists, business owners, too, want last summer's citywide curfew for minors reinstated. Others have different ideas. And right now, as a city, we truly need to hear it all, hear everyone out. TikTok historian Sherman Dilla Thomas weighed in on Twitter, and many agree, some disagreed as well. Here's his tweet, in part, says 